Today, I would like to talk about the Canon G7X Mark III versus its number one competitor out there right now, in my opinion. So stay tuned, it's gonna be a great show. Trying to make y'all comfortable. Right. For the record, you ain't trying to grow, then it's done for you. Right. For the record, lab on me going all the way. For the record, ain't trying to link no time to waste. All right, first off, let's go ahead and get this out of the way. This camera keeps getting compared to recently released Sony models, and I just can't see how they're remotely close to the same ballpark. I mean, in order to better illustrate my opinion, let's go ahead and just put this on paper. Okay, here is my breakdown on why I think that the Canon G7X Mark III should be compared to the Sony RX100 Mark V compared to any other camera, okay? So on the top here, we're gonna have the cameras. On the, on the side here, we're gonna have specs. And my handwriting's terrible, so uh, bear with me on this, but we have the Sony RX100 Mark 7, which is called 7, I don't know, it's like the IV or VI. Then you have the Sony RX100 uh, Mark 6. Then you have, you can go ahead and say the Sony RX100 uh, Mark 5. And then in this case, we have the A, right? And then lastly, you're gonna have the Canon G7X Mark 3. Shoot, three. Okay. So if we look at the specs, let's start off with the release date. Not that this really matters, but just to put some context to everything. 1080p, 120 frames per second, right? Let's start off with uh, that as a benchmark. And then we'll get into the megapixel of the camera. Maximum 4K record time. And then we'll have continuous shooting FPS. Zoom range. Aperture. I don't really care about the ISO range, so I'm not gonna really put that. They're pretty all pretty close to comparable. I think the Sony is uh, actually 25,600 versus the Canon at uh, 6400 uh, but so all the Sony's are 200 to 25600 and then the Canon G7X Mark III is 125 to 6400 or at least that was the information that I was provided by my research online so uh, feature super slow-mo spoiler alert Canon does not have that so this is like really high frames per second like 240 or 960 frames per second in the small burst time frame then we'll do mic input, All right? Because everyone wants that apparently. Touch screen. ND filter. And lastly, the price. All right, so Sony RX100 Mark VII uh, came out on 6-1 of 2019. The Sony RX100 Mark VI came out June 5th of 18. The 5A, not the 5, but uh, the 5A, which is a new, newer re-release of the model, came out July 13th of 18. And then the Canon G7X Mark III, as we all know, came out August 1st, 2019. 120 frames per second uh, at 1080p. Can the Mark 7 do it? Yes, 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 and yes. These guys all can do 120 frames per second at 1080p. Uh, megapixel, uh, it's gonna be 20 megapixel across the board. Maximum 4K resolution. Oh, I'm sorry, maximum 4K record time. Uh, so supposedly the Mark 7, it's unlimited. Granted, you got battery and enough, you know, storage space for the uh, 
take a look at the Sony RX100 Mark VI. Maximum 4K record time. It's going to be five minutes. Five minutes for the 5A. And for the G7X Mark III, 10 minutes. Okay. Continuous frames per second. Uh, so apparently this has like an up to a burst. The Mark VII has up to a burst of like 90 frames per second. But they're um, listed at 20, 24, 24 for the 5, and 20 for the G7X Mark III. Zoom range, 20, 24 to 200. That's a pretty wild zoom, I'll admit. But I don't know where you're going to use the zoom in these guys. People do it, I mean, I guess whatever. I, to each his own on that. 24 to 70 is my vlog range, right? This is what I, I consider the vlog range. And this one actually is supposed to be 100 millimeter. I don't know if this is including the digital zoom because it does have a digital zoom on top of the optical zoom. So that might be the case. Aperture, f2.8 on the 7, f2.8, right? And f1.8 on the 5, and f1.8 on the G7X Mark III. So this faster aperture is gonna get you lower light uh, visibility and lower light photos, lower, lower light photography. So nighttime shots, club scenes, whatever you want. 2.8, sure it's great if you leave the shutter open a little bit longer, but whenever you're recording, this could be a problem. Super slow motion, yes. It says 960 frames per second. And I believe that's across the board to the five. So the G7X does not have high frame rate, slow resolution. Mic input. Yes, the seven does have mic input. The six, however, does not. And neither does the five, but the G7X Mark III does. Yes. The touchscreen. Does the, the Sony RX100 Mark VII have a touchscreen? Yes, it does. Apparently the 6 does as well, and the 5 does not, which is kind of a bummer. And the, the Canon G7X Mark III does, so yes. And D-Filter. This is actually a really nice feature, so no, no, yes and yes. So the, the RX100 Mark V does have an ND filter. The Canon G7X Mark III does as well. And I think I heard something about there being like two different types of stops of, of uh, ND filters for the G7X Mark III. I have not experienced or messed around with that, so I can't really talk on that. Now, the bottom line is the price. So the price comes in for the, the Mark VII at $1199. Okay, the Mark VI, 1099. The, the, the RX100 Mark V A is listed at 899. However, I found this in Dubai. Uh, I think it's AI. Dubai for 799. This is the price that I paid for it in Dubai. So you can find this camera cheaper. And the Canon G7X Mark III is $749, as we all know. So when you look at the price, you look at the specifications, the Canon G7X Mark III comes out cheaper than all the other cameras. And the only thing that you're really losing out on is going to be the high frame rates, slow motion, right? And the bigger zoom, but the bigger zoom comes at the cost of um, a slower aperture so I don't know that it's really worth going through all these other cameras whenever you really look at it I think that if you want to take a camera for vlogging for low light and for uh, 4k the Canon G7X Mark III definitely fits that bill in almost every aspect and not only that you do have the, the Canon G7X Mark III color science to go with it which is nice it's really really nice so hopefully this makes a little bit of sense hopefully the ability to read this is not too difficult my handwriting is not the best at all and i will acknowledge that firsthand however 
uh, whenever I put all this on paper and took a look at everything, what I'm trying to tell you guys is that you're really not getting a whole lot more for the Sony except for an increased zoom. And if you're using this for vlogging, what is the point of having this increased zoom? I mean, if you're trying to get some sniper shots, I guess, but what is the point of doing that if you're vlogging about yourself? I don't know. When it comes down to it though, for a $300 or you know, $350 difference, I don't think that any of these other cameras are gonna be really worth it. And I mean, in some cases where it's $450 difference, it's a lot of money for you know just these extra small differences. So hopefully this will make a little bit more sense. So let's face it, if you're in that club or any other low light situation and you wanna get a professional looking photo, the cell phone camera is only gonna go so far. Despite the fact that it's inconvenient both size and weight, getting into a club or nightlife venue with the DSLR, with the lens and all this extra stuff is nearly impossible. Uh, unless you have like a, a lanyard or some kind of uh, name tag that says like media or press on it, right? Today's compact cameras are so versatile and even have the ability to wirelessly transfer photos directly to your phone so you can upload it to social media directly after you snap it. The G7X Mark III is an amazing camera with all the features I've been hoping to get out of pocket-sized digital camera. Besides the autofocus issues that, I, that people keep complaining about, I really don't see why everyone wouldn't want to have this camera in their arsenal. To add to that, I've both seen and experienced mixed reviews, good and bad, when it comes to face tracking and autofocus. The face tracking is pretty instant, but when it comes to focusing, I've seen it snap directly into focus, and I've also seen it wait a few seconds and just be off by a few clicks. Uh, the microphone is 10 times better than any other camera of its size, and now with the ability to film 4K, you really don't have to lug around a big DSLR to capture that moment. The fact that it has a microphone jack is cool, and we'll do a microphone check just to test the quality between the two different cameras uh, with the onboard microphone and an external to so you can see the difference between the two. Um, but without having a, a place to mount on the camera itself, it seems pretty pointless unless you're going to carry this big ass rig around everywhere you go. Anytime you want to turn a small compact camera like this into a huge rig like this it kind of it kind of defeats the purpose for me because i just don't understand why you would want to take a small profile camera that's small lightweight compact and very very portable for filming into this huge thing so the whole fact that it has a microphone port just kind of it defeats the purpose in my opinion i don't really see a use for it uh, i'm sure some other people will and of course there's a way you can make it smaller than all of this but i'm just saying um, probably one of the easiest things that you could do that might actually make this thing worthwhile if there was a way that you could like mount your you know and then even if you do that then you got to worry about this little fuzzy guy getting in the way it just i don't know in my opinion just use the camera as it was meant to be used just by itself you don't need to have everything all you know all this extra stuff it just doesn't make any sense let's go ahead and jump to the test that i did between the Sony RX100 Mark 5A and the Canon G7X Mark III. All right, guys. Uh, well, we'll just wait for the Canon to autofocus to get there. Okay, wow. So uh, these are both of the cameras sitting right next to each other. Um, both of them are pretty much at the same height. I think that the uh, Canon, there we go. Okay, pretty much same height on both of these guys. What we're doing now is a quick autofocus test. So I'm gonna put my hands in front Try to block both of the cameras. All right, and then focus back. The Sony is blazing fast. Um, keep in mind, both of the ISO and aperture, everything is exactly the same on both of the cameras. They are also both equal distance. And currently, right now, we have no microphone. So I'm running it at 1000 ISO, f1.8, and 160th of a second uh, for the shutter speed. So they should both be pretty comparable. I think again, the Canon color science, I don't know, it looks brighter. Um, obviously you can see uh, a lot more, I would say uh, warm tones in the, in the Canon. And for some reason, uh, my head's like cropped a little bit on the Sony and it's at 24. So I'm a little confused by that because they are literally exactly the same distance apart. Okay, so again, we're gonna do an autofocus test between the two. So here goes my hand, let's see. Waiting, waiting, waiting for the cannon. Boom, and then back to my face. 
the Canon's autofocus uh, to track the face is really good. And honestly, when you use a touch screen and actually touch uh, on a specific item, it locks on and it's it's really, really good about keeping that focus. So I think that that's pretty sweet. Um, now we're gonna do an audio test between the two cameras. So this is the Sony RX100 Mark V A. And this is the Canon G7X Mark III. I'm gonna go ahead and do one more test with the Sony RX100 Mark V A without a microphone because it doesn't have a microphone input. And then now, the test with the Canon G7X Mark III with a microphone plugged in. And I'm using the Rode Video Micro for the audio. So it's not the most expensive one, but it's one that works. I don't see the point of having a huge microphone that is the size of the camera. Even if you take the shoe off, right? This microphone is almost twice the size as the camera. I mean, it makes no sense to carry this thing. So I just don't ever see that as a feasible option. I don't know why you would use that. Nevertheless, hopefully that uh, kind of concludes the test. Oh, one more bonus test. I'm gonna give you guys the uh, I'm going to give you guys a test between the light sensitivity and you can kind of tell the difference between the colors whenever I turn on a brighter light and go low all the way up, super bright all the way low. And then now we're going to switch the tones between cool and warm. So this is the cool tone and now we're going over to the more warmer tone. So you can kind of see the difference in how the light matches up between the two cameras. So I think that's a pretty extensive test in my opinion. Uh, you know, again, low light is amazing between these two cameras. I really like their capabilities. Uh, so if you want to take a, a nice club photo or if you want to, you know, you know, take some night photography or do some night vlogging, both of these cameras are great. But in my opinion, the color science from the G7X Mark III is just right on point so uh, again I'm not sponsored this is not something that I'm getting paid to say so neither one of these cameras were actually given to me I paid for them with my own money and because of that I'm a very unbiased person whenever it comes to these two cameras I think the Sony RX100 Mark V is sweet for slow motion because the G7X Mark III is a, is a better camera for like an all-around shooter uh, doing 4k 1080p I will say the most ridiculous setting, uh, you know, switching this camera from 24, it's actually 29 frames per second or whatever it is, to 120 frames per second is tedious. You have to go through the menu and actually like select something. I'm sure you can bind it to like a button, but it, it seems pretty pointless. So you can't just kind of like select the frame rate that you want without turning on this high frames per second option, which is ridiculous. The only way that I think it makes sense if you're going to take around all this extra gear to have the external microphone plugged into the camera is if you have a small bag or like a fanny pack that you put it in and you can whip it out pretty quick. But other than that, my opinion, the microphone is pointless. I would just rather use the camera itself. The microphone isn't that bad in my personal opinion. Way better than the Sony RX100 Mark V A. So in my opinion, if you're really going to carry that camera around, you don't need all the external stuff. Just be happy with what you got, capture the moment get your vlog done, and get on with your life. Well, that about wraps up this vlog. Hopefully you learned something that you didn't find elsewhere. I put in a lot of time into this, so if you appreciate it, definitely consider hitting that subscribe button, ringing the bell, and doing all the cool things that everybody would do if they were me. This is the part where I turn you off the remote, so. For the record, I'm done trying to make y'all comfortable. For the record, you ain't trying to grow, then it's done for you. For the record, lab on me going all the way. For the record, ain't trying to link no time to waste.